we have two types of parallelism that we often use in circuits. So this parallelism is spatial parallelism and temporal parallelism. Spatial parallelism is basically duplicating hardware. So if we have an adder or if we have some circuit that's calculating something, well, instead of one, let's use two or three or four, right? So spatial parallelism means I'm just gonna do a bunch of things in parallel or at the same time. And so this is duplicating hardware to perform multiple tasks at once. Um, this is similar to what you have in your PC where you have a quad core processor, you have four processors, for example, um, and we've just duplicated the hardware to um, allow for parallelism of basically calculating multiple things at the exact same time. Temporal parallelism is like an assembly line where we break up a task into multiple stages and uh, perform part of the task at once. So we have multiple, so for example, let's say we have a, a, a an assembly line for a car and maybe this is putting together the chassis and this is adding the tires and this is adding the um, interior or something. And this is, you know, finishing up the exterior of the car. So car one could start here in the assembly line at time t equals zero. And when car one is um, ready to move to the second stage, the tire, adding the tire stage, car one moves to that stage. And now a new car comes into the chassis stage, car two. And then car one will move on to the, you know, interior, putting in the interior stage. And car two will move to the putting on the tire stage. And then we add another car that gets started in the chassis stage, car three. And so in time, right, we have three cars at this point um, being, being worked on, being built. And so we break, um, break a single task up into multiple stages and across time, so temporal parallelism across time, this word temporal means time, um, we're, uh, we're creating three cars or doing three um, unique operations, separate operations at once. So let's talk about um, how we can analyze how, um, how a system is performing with regards to parallelism. So a token is a group of in inputs that is processed to produce a group of outputs. Latency is the time for a token to pass from the start to the end of a system, so to complete the entire calculation, for example. And throughput is the number of tokens produced per unit time. Parallelism increases throughput, but it does not, um, so it increases throughput, but it does not help with latency, the time for any given task to be done. In fact, it usually uh, makes latency a bit worse. So let's look at some examples of these. So let's suppose that um, Ben Bitdiddle has a task. He wants to bake some cookies to celebrate his traffic light controller installation. And so it takes five minutes to roll the cookies and 15 minutes to bake it. What is the latency and throughput without parallelism? Well, latency is the time it takes to, you know, have the cookies, start rolling them, baking them, and then eating the cookies, right? The output is the, the, the finished cookie. Um, so the latency is five plus 15 minutes, or in other words, 20 minutes is the latency. And the through, throughput is, um, one batch every 20 minutes. Or one, one tray every 20 minutes. In other words, one tray every third of an hour is three trays per hour. Right, 20 minutes is a third of an hour. Okay, so we have the latency, the time, you know, if, if you're waiting for that cookie to be done, we have to wait 20 minutes from start to finish. Um, how many trays per hour can we produce? Three trays per hour. Now let's suppose that we want to employ parallelism. So with spatial parallelism, we're, um, Ben is gonna ask Alyssa P. Hacker to help using her own oven. Um, and in te temporal parallelism, Ben's still gonna complete the tasks, but he's gonna have two stages 
of rolling and baking. And, and he's gonna have two trays. So while the first batch is baking, he'll um, be able to roll the second batch and put it onto the tray. So here's um, the example of spatial parallelism. So here we have Ben. This is the original kind of path with just Ben making cookies. And we had every 20 minutes a tray of cookies coming out. But now every 20 minutes, we have two trays of cookies because both Ben and Alyssa are baking, baking cookies. And so the latency, if I am waiting for cookies to be done, it will still take 20 minutes to get the cookies out. So five plus 15 minutes. But the throughput is now instead of, we used to have one tray every 20 minutes or every third of an hour. Now we have two trays every 20 minutes or every third of an hour. And so now the throughput is six trays per hour. Whereas before without parallelism, we just had three trays per hour. So using spatial parallelism, we've doubled the throughput as expected, but the latency stayed the same. With temporal parallelism, Ben is going to you know, do all the work himself, but he's going to break it up into two stages. So he's going to have the five minute rolling out the cookies and placing them on the tray stage and then the baking stage. So we have stage one and stage two. And so the latency actually stays the same. So it still takes five plus 15 equals you know, 20 minutes to get out. Um, you know, if you're waiting for cookies, you're gonna have to wait 20 minutes um, to, get the, to, to get the first cookie. But the throughput, now while Ben is waiting for the first tray to bake, he can roll out the next tray of cookies. He has another, another tray, so he can put another batch of cookies on that tray. So when the, the, uh, the first batch of cookies finishes um, cooking, he immediately can put the next tray in the oven and so forth. Right? It keeps doing that until he has, you know, millions of cookies. And so the latency is still um, 20 minutes or a third of an hour, but the throughput is, well, he's getting a tray of cookies after the first batch every 15 minutes. So you can see every 15 minutes, he gets one tray of cookies. So one tray per, well, 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour. So every quarter of an hour. And so now he's getting four trays of cookies baked per hour. And so what would have happened if both Ben and Alyssa have, right, we use spatial parallelism and temporal parallelism. Ben and Alyssa are both, um, you know, doing temporal parallelism, but we have Alyssa down here as well, um, baking cookies. Well, now instead of one tray every quarter of an hour with both spatial and temporal parallelism, we get two trays every quarter of an hour, which is equal to eight trays per hour. So how does this correspond to our circuits? So let's suppose we have some task. Um, we'll just make up a task here, some calculation that we're trying to calculate. And we could use, so let's say we're calculating this for input XOR function. And we could just calculate it um, as it is. And let's suppose the TPD of this circuit is, um, let's say it's 100 picoseconds. And so each TPD of, of the XOR gate is 50 picoseconds. And so um, we could see what the latency and throughput is. Well, the latency would be the time it takes to put our inputs in 
until we get our outputs out. And so um, the time is really the, the um, latency is a cycle time, TC. If you really uh, you know, want to get into the nitty gritty, it's really a setup time plus that cycle time um, plus a propagation clock to Q. But, um, you know, kind of abstracting away those, those details, latency is a cycle time. And the throughput is, well, how often are we getting a uh, throughput is how often are we get, getting a result? Well, we're getting a result every whatever that cycle time is. One over TC is the throughput. And so um, what happens if we use spatial parallelism? Well, now we're going to put two of these circuits. I'll just draw a combination logic like that. And so now we have two of these circuits, spatial parallelism. And so the latency is still the same, still takes us the same amount of time to get um, any outputs. Uh, but the throughput is, well, now instead of one kind of calculation every cycle time, now the new throughput the new throughput is two calculations per cycle time. And so we've doubled the throughput um, of our system. And so how would we then employ temporal parallelism into, this, into the circuit, also called pipelining? Well, let's see, we have a circuit here. We could break it up into two stages. So we could add a register, this would be a good place to add a register in between that, um, you know, in the middle of that calculation or that, that combination logic, the calculation circuitry. And so now we have two stages. And so we'd have our stage one and stage two. It will turn out that our latency will be bigger because of we've added an extra TPCQ and TPD. So now let's say that our, um, so let, let's put some numbers to that. So let's suppose that we had um, TPCQ is equal to um, 60 picoseconds and T setup equals 40 picoseconds. And so and let's just let's make this um, let's make this like 900 picoseconds for the original delay of the circuit. So that would mean that T X or propagation delay was 450 picoseconds. So let's suppose we have that. So originally, without the added register, without our added register here, it would have been it would have it would have been our cycle time would have been equals T P C Q plus T P D plus T setup, so it would have been um, 60 plus 900 plus 40 picoseconds would be 1,000 picoseconds, or in other words, one nanosecond. So cycle time would have been one nanosecond. Latency would have been, in this case, latency would have been just the time it takes to um, calculate one one of those calculations and the throughput would have been throughput would have been one calculation every cycle time so in other words the frequency of the circuit now let's add that register in there approximately without getting into details latency is approximately the same actually a little bit longer but approximately the same and throughput is now well um, we can approximately make our cycle time half of the cycle time. So our throughput is approximately, again, we'll put real numbers on this. Throughput is approximately um, one over TC over two. Our cycle time is approximately cut in half. So we approximately get two over TC, which is twice the throughput we had before. But let's put some actual numbers on that to see what we got. So now our cycle time, our new cycle time with this pipeline system or temporal parallelism being used, 
now our cycle time is, well, we still have, has to be greater than or equal to propagation clock to Q, still that, plus TPD, that's changed, plus T setup. And so we get TPCQ with 60, TPD is now just a single XOR gate delay, right? This is not two, some people count that as two, but these are going in parallel, right? So this time is in parallel, 60 plus TPD uh, is 450 now, 450 picoseconds plus T setup, which is 40. And so our new cycle time is 550 picoseconds. So we said it would be half, cycle time would be half. Originally it was a thousand, that's close to a half, but we have that overhead of um, the sequencing overhead, propagation clock to Q and setup time and so um, it's not it's not exactly half. So TC is 550 picoseconds. Because we have two stages, the latency is one, two cycle times. Again, we could add setup time plus propagation clock to Q if we wanted to be, um, you know, exactly precise. But now our new latency is two TC, where our cycle time is 550. So it's 1100 picoseconds and our throughput is equal to, well, still one over the TC. This is a new TC. So it's one over 550 picoseconds. One calculation, right? Every 550 picoseconds, we're going to get a clock edge and get a new result out. New result, new result, next result. And so um, our, our uh, throughput is approximately twice, right? It used to be one over a thousand picoseconds or one gigahertz, one giga result per second. And it's just less than twice the, um, the throughput of the, the non-pipeline version. And so in this case, we could only break, break up our circuit into two stages, but if we have some combinational logic and we can break it up. So originally we had this combination of logic. We can break it up into even more stages, right? If we can break that combination of logic up into even more stages, then we can even get a, a bigger advantage with our, with our temporal parallelism, also known as pipelining. But now our, depending on what that cycle time is, is shorter now than it was when we didn't have it pipelined. But now the latency view would be one, two, three, four cycle times, and the throughput would, would be, as usual, one over TC, because every clock edge, we're getting a new result out of our, of our system. And of course, there are some subtleties of, well, it takes some time to fill up the pipeline, right? When we start, start up our system, well, it's going to take, you know, one, two, three, four cycles to get the, this, um, the pipeline full, and that's called um, filling the pipeline. And then at the end, we're going to be draining the pipeline where, you know, the, the last result is going to pipeline, is going to, you know, pipeline its way through to the, um, to the output.